Welcome to my tutorial series on modules. Today I will cover calendar module. Calendar module provides various calendar related variables and functions and five different classes to print a text or HTML calendar for a given month or a year. In this tutorial I will cover all these functions and variables provided by calendar module. I will also cover all five different classes provided by calendar module but not in detail. Because these classes are very easy to use and the Python documentation provides everything you need to know about these classes. Besides that, you don't use the calendar module in everyday programming. So let's start first with variables and functions provided by calendar module. The day name variable is an array that represents the days of the week in current locale, as shown in this example. The weekday Monday has index value 0 and the weekday Sunday has index value 6. Similarly, the variable day abbreviation prints an array that represents the abbreviated days of the week in the current locale, as shown in this example. Like day name and day abbreviation variables, both month name and month day abbreviation variables are also array variables and they represent the months of the year in current locale. Please note that the month January has index value 1 and not 0 and the month December has index value of 12. Now let's look at the functions provided by calendar module. The function first weekday returns an integer value between 0 and 6 which represents the first day of the week. By default it is set to 0 which is Monday. With set first weekday function you can change the default weekday. It takes an integer value between 0 and 6 where 0 represents Monday and integer value 6 represents Sunday. You can also use the constants defined in calendar module to change the default weekday. The is leap year function takes a year as an argument and return true or false if the year passed as argument is a leap year or not. Another very similar function is leap days which takes two arguments which must be valid years and it returns the number of leap years between those years. The weekday function takes three arguments, year, month and day, and it returns the day of the week. In this example, I have given 10th November 1983, and the weekday function returns integer value 3, which is Thursday. The next function week header takes an argument n, which specifies the width and characters for one weekday, and it returns a header containing abbreviated weekday names. In my first line, I am calling the week header function with argument n set to 2 and the week header function returns a header containing abbreviated weekdays name. In next line I have set the argument n to 3. The next function month range takes two arguments year and month and it returns a triple containing first weekday of the month and total number of days in that month. In this example the first weekday in November 1983 was Tuesday and there were 30 days in that month. Similarly in April 1985 there were 30 days and first week day of April was Monday. The month calendar function takes two arguments, a year and a month, and it returns a matrix in which each row represents the week in that month. By default, each week begins with Monday and the day outside of the month are represented by zeros. The next function month calls the format month method of text calendar class, which we will cover later in this tutorial. The month function returns a month's calendar in multi-line string. The month function takes four arguments, a year, a month, argument w for date column width and argument l for lines per week and by default they are set to zero. In this example I call month function without giving the formatting arguments w and l. In my next example I set w to 4 and in next example I set argument l to integer value 2 and you can see the difference between both examples. The next function peer month is exactly like the month function we have covered before. The only difference between month and peer month functions is that peer month function also prints the output on your terminal. Like month function calendar function calls the format year method of text calendar class. The calendar function takes five arguments where argument year is compulsory and it returns a three column calendar for the given year as shown in this example. The argument W specified date column width, the argument L lines per week, 
the argument C, number of spaces between month columns, and argument M stands for number of columns. The peer call function is exactly like the calendar function, but it also prints the output on the terminal. The timegm function takes a time tuple as argument and returns the time since epoch. If you don't know what time tuple is, you can watch my other tutorial on time module. In this example, I import time module and call gm time and time functions and they return time tuple and time since epoch. In next line, I call time gm function of calendar module, having gm time function as argument. If you look at the output, time gm function has converted the time tuple to number of seconds since epoch. Now let's look at the calendar class provided by calendar module. The init method of calendar class takes the optional argument first weekday. By default, it is set to zero. As I have mentioned before, the integer value zero represents Monday and integer value six represents Sunday. So in this example, I have created an instance of class calendar without giving the optional argument first weekday. So my first weekday is Monday. The first four methods of calendar class are very similar to each other and they return an iterator object. The iter weekdays method returns an iterator for the weekday numbers that will be used for one week, as shown in this example. The iter month dates method takes two arguments, year and month, and it returns an iterator for all days of the given month, and also all days before the start of the month and after the end of the month that are required to get a complete week. The next method iter month days is very similar to the method above, but the output is simply the day numbers. Again, all days before the start of the month or after the end of the month that are required to get a complete week are set to zero. The output of next method iter month days two is very similar to the above method, but the output contains tuples consisting of a day and weekday numbers. The next six methods of calendar class are very easy to use. The month states calendar method returns a list of full weeks of the given month as datetime date objects. Please watch my other tutorial on datetime module in which I have covered date objects. Similarly, the year states calendar method returns list of days of the given year as datetime date objects as shown here. The month state calendar method returns a list of weeks of the given month and weeks are lists of day numbers. Whereas the output of month's day two calendar method is very similar to the month's day calendar method, but weeks are lists of seven tuples with day and weekdays numbers. The year's day calendar method takes a year and width which has default value of three as arguments, and it returns lists consisting of months, weeks, and days, and days outside of the month are set to zero. Whereas the output of year days 2 calendar method is very similar to the above method, but weeks are list of tuples containing day and weekday number. If it all sounds complex, please try some examples. The text calendar class is used to generate plain text calendars. And like calendar class which we have seen before, the constructor of text calendar class takes first weekday as an optional argument. In this example, I have created an instance of text calendar class. The text calendar class provides only four methods. The format month method of text calendar class takes four arguments, a year, a month, W which is the width of date columns, and L which specifies the number of lines that each week will use. Format month method returns a month's calendar in a multi-line string as shown in this example. The next method peer month prints a month's calendar as returned by format month method. So you don't have to use the print function. The format year method returns a m column calendar for the entire year as a multi-line string. The optional parameters w, l, c and m can be used to set width between two columns, blank line between two rows, space between two months and number of months in a row. Whereas the peer year method prints the calendar for an entire year as returned by format year method above. The local text calendar class is a subclass of text calendar class and its constructor takes an additional argument local. 
So you can create a text calendar object in your native language as shown in this example. The HTML calendar class is very similar to text calendar class, but it generates a HTML calendar. The constructor of HTML calendar class also takes an optional argument weekday. The format month method returns month's calendar as an HTML table. If the second argument with year is true, the year will be included in the header, otherwise just the month name will be used. Whereas the format year method returns a year's calendar as an HTML table. The argument width specifies the number of months per row. The format year page method returns year's calendar as a complete HTML page. The argument's width specifies the number of months per row. CSS is the name of cascading style sheet to be used. And encoding specifies the encoding to be used for the output. Whereas the local HTML calendar class, which is the subclass of HTML calendar class, can be used to create an HTML calendar object in your native language, as shown in this example. I hope you have now basic understanding of calendar module. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please subscribe my channel for future tutorials.